feedforward echo effect is created by using parallel processing with two paths. Our first path will be a dry, unprocessed path for our input signal. Our second path will have a time delay, will be our wet or processed version of our input signal. A feedforward echo is created by feeding the input to the system to the output of the system. This will give us one repetition of our signal. We can change the relative level that's perceived of the echo by using a gain block on the parallel path. Let's go ahead and open up MATLAB and look at a few different ways that we can create the feed forward echo. Here in MATLAB, let's implement a feed forward echo. I'm going to demonstrate three different methods to do this. I've already started a script where I import in a test sound file, a recording of an acoustic guitar. First thing we need to do is calculate our delay time or delay length. As audio engineers, typically we think of this in units of seconds or milliseconds. So I'll put in a variable here that we can set. It's based on number of seconds of delay. To begin with, we'll say that we have one second of delay. Units of seconds. Our computer needs to be able to think in terms of units of samples. So we need to go through a conversion here. This makes it possible when we're working in units of samples to index the appropriate sample number in our signals or arrays. So we'll put in a variable here, samples of delay. This is gonna be a conversion. We multiply our seconds of delay, multiply by our sampling rate. Put over here in a comment, we're gonna be converting seconds multiplied by samples per second our seconds will cancel. We're left over with units of samples. Now let's look at our first implementation method, and that's going to be using zero padding. The idea here is we need to delay our signal in time. So we'll put in some zeros into an array at the beginning so that now it's offset some number of samples later on in time. The feed forward echo is based on having two parallel paths. We're going to have a dry path. We're also going to have a wet path. And these two things get added together. Our wet path, we're going to be feeding our input signal to our output through a delay block. So we can implement this by putting in some zeros at the beginning in front of our input signal. So I'll use array concatenation. I'm going to put in an array of zeros to begin with based on our number of samples of delay. It's a column vector that I'll concatenate with our input signal. So now it's been offset in time by some amount. Our dry path, we want to have our original signal to begin with, but then we need this array to have the same number of samples as the wet path so we can add them together. So what I'll do is at the end, put in some zeros, also has a column vector that now we can add together. We know that what we're going to do is create an output signal. So I'm going to initialize it as a bunch of zeros with the same size as our dry path. Now we'll actually go through and perform the delay. So I'll create a loop that will go sample by sample. So we'll start out with a variable here in that represents a sample number starts at our first sample and goes all the way up through the end based on the length of our dry path. Here we're going to go through starting with our first sample of our output signal and for each current sample we're going to add together sample from our dry path and a sample from our wet path. Now that we've created our effect, what I'll do is uh, play it back so we can listen to it. So we'll use our output signal and our sampling rate. Now when we run this script, we should be able to hear the effect. So let's look at a few parameters that we can change to 
uh, affect the sound of uh, the feed forward echo. So instead of using one second of delay, let's shorten it. How about 0 0.5 seconds of delay? We could go even shorter. How about a quarter of a second? Another thing we could do is change the relative amplitude of our wet path compared to our dry path. So I'm gonna put in here a variable G that we multiply by our wet path. So put up here a gain for the wet path, G, how about 0 0.5? So reducing the amplitude uh, by six decibels. So that's our first method, performing zero padding in order to create the echo. Let's look at a second method. What I'm going to do here is comment out this code. Our next method that we'll use is gonna be based on array indexing. The idea here is our wet path is actually gonna be a version of our input signal X. So if we wanted to, we can index a sample number that's in the past earlier on from the current sample in order to create the delay. So here what we can do is we don't need to create a wet path and a dry path. What we can do is uh, start a loop. Same thing as before. This time we'll do the length of our input signal. We'll go up to the end. The way that this will work is we will index to create our output signal. So we'll have our output here is gonna be based on the length of x now, we'll index our current sample is equal to x at that current sample. It's combined together a delayed version of x where we look at some sample earlier on in the past. So how we can index this is to actually subtract off the samples of delay from our index. Now, one thing we have to be careful of is when we're looking earlier on in our signal, when we start right at the beginning, we're gonna have n equal to one. And so we're gonna subtract off the samples of delay and we'll actually have a negative index. We want to avoid having a negative index. So what we'll do is set up a conditional statement here. We'll say, if n minus the samples of delay, if this quantity is uh, less than one. So if the index is less than one, then we're going to do something different. We'll create our output signal. That's just based on our input signal. You know, if we wanted to, we could put in a zero here, but it's actually unnecessary. But that would be similar to what we did before. So now we'll have a second condition. When we reach a sample where we want to be adding in our delay, now we're gonna be using X here, but looking at it in the past. So starting when we're at like sample number uh, 44,101, and we had one second of delay, we'll look all the way back at the beginning of uh, at index number one. So I'll be able to run this script. We can uh, listen to the result out here with the sound of our output. And for good measure, let's also use this code that we put in here for the gain. We can multiply here to bring down the level of our delay. 
Finally, let's move on and look at our third method to implement the feed forward delay. So I'm going to comment out this code we had before for array indexing. And our third method is going to be based on creating a delay buffer. This is going to be an array that we actually create in memory to store the previous samples of our signal. Then what we'll do is index our buffer to get out the delayed samples of our signal that we've actually stored in a new array. So let's create our buffer here and we'll initialize it to be a bunch of zeros. Samples of delay. So we'll actually make sure that the number of samples is however long we want the delay to be. The way that this will work is each time through a loop, we're going to put in a value of our input signal into the buffer and it will trickle down each time we iterate through our loop, eventually we'll get to the point of filling up this array with our input signal such that after some number of loops, we're going to be adding back in our input. So I think it will make sense here when we put this all together. We'll do a loop based on the length of our input. And we'll have to have two commands in here. So the first one is we're going to create our output signal. So sample number n, what we're going to do is add together our dry input here with our buffer, but the last sample of our buffer. So we're going to get out the last sample of our buffer. Initially, it's going to be a zero. Then we need to update our buffer. So here, we're going to put in an array. And the way this works is we're going to shift all our samples down through the buffer. So initially here, our buffer, we're going to put in current sample of our input signal. We're feeding the input into our buffer. And what we're going to do then is shift all the other samples in our buffer down. So here, we're going to start at the first sample in our buffer and go all the way up through the end, except we're going to take one of the samples off the end, subtract one off our index there. This way, our buffer stays the same length. But each time through the loop, we're going to be adding in a new sample of our input signal and shifting all the other ones down. So eventually, when we shift this sample down enough times, it will get to the end and we'll start to use it after it's been delayed the appropriate number of samples, which is based off the length of our buffer. So let's go back and uh, initialize our output like we did before. Now when we play it back, we'll be able to hear uh, the feed forward echo get created. Lastly, if we want to change the gain, just like we did before, bring in this command to set the gain, and we'll just scale this last sample that we use here of our buffer. So now we've looked at three different methods, zero padding, array indexing, and the delay buffer. Each has their own advantages and disadvantages for using in different situations whenever you're trying to implement the feed forward echo.